So, so there we saw how graphical system design is really helping throughout the design process of RF, from integrating measurements, uh, high fidelity measurements, into the design process, all the way towards actually implementing next generation communication systems with those same components. Now, RF has been for a long time a challenging area in test and measurement. Another challenging area is in the validation and test, production test, of semiconductor devices. So to tell us more about that challenge and a bunch of new products that we'll be delivering to help, I'd like to bring up our newest director of product marketing, Charles Schroeder, and hardware engineer, Rolando Ortega. Hey, Charles. Welcome, man. Now, uh, Charles spent the last uh, 15 or so years of his career as one of our leaders in our engineering team, our R&D team, and he just recently uh, joined marketing. So welcome to marketing. <laughs> Tell us about the challenge in semiconductor tests. All right, thanks, Eric. So just as predicted by Moore's law, the density of transistors on a semiconductor is, is doubled roughly every two years. And as the complexity of these devices is increased, the cost or the price that our suppliers can sell those has gone down, and yet the cost of test has remained the same. We're approaching a point in time where the cost of test is greater than the cost of producing the silicon, and this is an untenable position. So major semiconductor customers are increasingly turning to PXI as an alternative to traditional semiconductor test systems as a way to lower their cost of test and address this complexity. And as a result, the adoption of PXI into semiconductor test applications has been very, very strong for us. Yeah, it's definitely a very exciting area. So what are we doing to help this issue? Very good. So today I'd like to show you three new ways that we're bringing innovations into the PXI platform that'll really help our semiconductor test customers. We're going to show you how we're incorporating more software-defined instrumentation, how we're bringing best-in-class technology through partnerships in the test and measurement industry, and how we're bringing the capabilities of traditional semiconductor test systems into the PXI platform. But first, let's get straight to the, the software-defined instrumentations. Source measure units, or SMUs, are one of the most common instruments in semiconductor test systems today, allowing engineers to make very accurate voltage and current measurements of their device under test. But traditional SMUs have one big challenge. And when you first apply a voltage or a current to a device under a test, you'd expect a step response like the one you see on the screen behind me under ideal circumstances. But with real world duds and with real world semiconductor test systems, you often see the one on the right. And this can be a real challenge. The overshoots can potentially damage a device under test. The long settling time significantly increase your test time. And the ringing can actually make a test system unstable. So, Rolando, can you please explain to us why this happens in traditional semiconductor test systems and SMUs and what you've done to help solve the problem? Absolutely, Charles. Like you said, an SMU does two things. First, it sources a current or voltage with very high precision, and then it measures back both voltage and current as seen across a device under test. To do this, an SMU requires a closed-loop controller, and traditionally we've implemented this in the analog domain. Now the problem is that the load or the device under test becomes a part of that control loop. As an instrument designer, I don't know what that load is gonna be ahead of time. And also different loads require different control loops. And since this is implemented in the analog domain, it's all op amps, transistors, resistors, and capacitors. And once we put all those on a board and ship them to a customer, we're stuck with whatever they do. For me, as a digital designer, I would much rather move this control loop into the digital domain, where I can actually play with it and modify it on the fly. Well, it turns out we have a great tool for implementing high-performance control loops here at NI. It's called LiveFPGA. So we actually took LiveFPGA and used it to prototype what a digitally controlled source measure unit would look like. And we like the performance of it so much that we've productized it, and we're now calling this source adapt technology. I'm happy to announce that source adapt technology is available today in the new PXIE 4141 four channel SMU. Very cool. So another instrument harnessing the power of LabVIEW and uh, FPGAs, what uh, performance improvement did it result in? Well, what you're actually creating is a software defined instrument and it gets you a bunch of things. Let me show you an example. Up here I have a current controlled oscillator. It takes a precision current source and outputs a frequency in the low gigahertz range proportional to the current. It's traditionally being a, a challenging load to test because it's inductive, and inductors react badly when you try to push current through them. So what I've got here 
is the current response to trying to step current into this device under test. Like we said, this isn't good, and this is the response you might expect from a traditional SMU. In fact, if I were using an SMU designed for very fast edge rates, this may very well oscillate forever. However, since I have source adapt, I can actually tweak the parameters of the control loop to compensate for the inductance in this particular load, or in fact, the reactance of pretty much any load. Now, I could play around with this and get it to the sweet spot here in a second, but since I've turned this into a software problem, I can actually use the new optimization BIs in LabVIEW 2011 to solve the problem for me. Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. <laughs> so our customers can now make faster, more stable measurements while protecting their device under test. I mean, this is a 10x uh, improvement in settling time. And also, since we moved the control loop from the analog to the digital domain, we've saved some real estate, allowing us to put four channels in a single PXIE module and to save some uh, cost per channel for our customers as well. Yeah. Now, you said you're testing a current-controlled oscillator. So tell us how you're measuring the output of the oscillator. Absolutely. So now that I've tuned my uh, current response, I can use a very high-speed digitizer to compare the, the output frequency with the current that I'm providing to it. Now I see that you're showing a full 5 gigahertz of real-time bandwidth, so I think I know what digitizer that is. That's right, Eric. Today, we're pleased to announce the second innovation we're bringing to semiconductor test, the NI PXI 5185 and 5186 digitizers. We've been working very, very closely in partnership with Tektronix to combine their world-class digitizer technology with our world-class technologies and software, signal processing, streaming, and synchronization to create the world's highest performance PXI Express digitizer with 12.5 gigasamples per second of sample rate and 5 gigahertz of bandwidth. And while this product is a fantastic oscilloscope, we can also use it to directly digitize RF signals and stream them back to the PC for signal analysis. Cool. Now I'd like to talk about our third area of innovation in the semiconductor industry. The workhorse of traditional semiconductor systems is the digital pin, which is an instrument that combines a high-speed digital generator and analyzer with the source and measurement capability for current and voltage of an SMU. The parallelization of this digital and DC measurement technology allows engineers to design tests for common things such as continuity testing, leakage, voltage threshold testing, as well as digital functional tests, all without changing out or switching in different instrumentation. Today, we're pleased to announce the release of the NI PXI Express 6556 high-speed digital waveform generator and analyzer with per-pin parametric measurement unit. Rolando, let's, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's uh, see it in action. Well, in this next test system, we're testing a 16-bit DAC from analog devices. We're using the per-pin electronics module to test opens and shorts, leakage, and threshold verification on pretty much every pin on the device, as well as playing digital waveforms to it and verifying the output with a digitizer. As you can see, I can test all of this in slightly under a second, which is actually pretty impressive. OK, now there's, uh, they can see, I think, that there's quite a few more DACs in the system. So let's show how we can test the rest of them. Sure. I can easily expand this system to a six-side production test system. Um, I have a per uh, per pin electronics module per each of these six DACs down here. And also, I can take the same code uh, I've been running and duplicate it, running it in parallel using uh, NI test stand. So I have a parallel hardware and parallel software. And you can see I can run it all. And it takes about the same time to test six DACs simultaneously as it took to test just one. Our parallel architecture allows us to achieve great multi-site efficiency, which is still often difficult for traditional semiconductor testers. That's fantastic. And I know our semiconductor test customers are going to be very excited about this capability and the other capability you showed. So Charles and Rolando, thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Thanks.